Hello guys, uh, I'm Kodal Srivastav. The uh, this is, uh, sure. this is uh, today. I'll be talking about the Apollo space program. Uh, next slide. Okay, so a little background on this is, subject is um, the USA and the Russia and Russia were uh, heavily competing to get a man to the moon. And actually, the first crewed spacecraft that went to space was um, called Vostok Number One, and it carried a. Uh, Wait, that should say astronaut. I don't know why it says Russian astronauts. Yeah, so the cool. astronauts were called. Okay, okay, yeah, whatever. Uh, Yuri, it's carried Yuri Gagarin into space in 1961. They did a full orbit uh, around the Earth, and uh, five other uh, crewed missions also occurred in that same spacecraft. And um, President John F. Kennedy of the United States set a goal for astronauts to land on the moon from uh, American astronauts on the moon by the end of the 60s. So. He actually, here's a, and Soviets actually were already developing a massive rocket to reach the moon. I forgot the name, but I know they're developing one. And here is a quote that JFK said, I think in an address to Congress, he said, quote, I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the, to, to achieving the goal before this decade is out of a la man landing, of a man on the moon and, uh, of a landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to Earth. Uh, next slide. Okay, so how, do you, how does the Apollo spacecraft work? Here you can see, actually, I think this is Apollo 11 launching on uh, Gen June, uh, when was it, July 16th, 1969. Um, basically, the rocket that gets, basically the, uh, the rocket that gets the astronauts into space and into orbit was called the Saturn V rocket, and it had three stages in it. The first stage, it was shut off. It launched. It was launched at Cape Canaveral, Florida, and Mission Control was located in Houston, Texas. Now, uh, the first stage, it, it was launched in Cape Canaveral. It shut off the first stage uh, about 42 miles above the Earth's surface uh, to get the astronauts into space. I think uh, out of the Earth's atmosphere. Basically, the Earth's atmosphere has gravity pulling you to the ground, um, but Basically, there's an escape velocity necessary to re uh, escape the Earth's atmosphere. And uh, you can look that up. I'm, I forgot the exact number, but it's there. Um, the second stage uh, uh, shut off once the spacecraft is in parking orbit. So it can start it's just basically rotating around. After about two or three loops, um, the, it, the third stage uh, gets fired up. And it's called the translunar injection, which sends, us away from, which sends the astronauts away from Earth and to the moon. Uh, let me move this side. Um, base, and then uh, there's another important difficult part that they do a lot of simulations in called docking, in which the lunar model adapter, module adapters, they detach from the uh, remaining stage and the command module and service module uh, do a turnaround. The command module is called the CSM. Uh, it's where the astronauts spend most of their time. It's also used for re-entry. Uh, um, and the service module has like fuel cells and uh, oxygen tanks, and uh, they turn around and they pull out the lunar module out of the. It was also called the LEM, um, which is the module that's used to land on the moon. It's designed for two people, which most usually there's a command module pilot and then a lunar module pilot and then a backup lunar module pilot or something. Uh, so only one person would get to, or only two people would get to land on the moon. The command module pilot would still be orbiting the moon. Um, waiting for them to return back. So that's what happens. So once you dock, that's the most difficult part of the mission. Now you're just headed to the moon, which you usually launch. The moon is orbiting the Earth, so when you're launching, you're going to intersect the Earth. That's what intersect with the moon. You have to calculate that uh, exact time. And and then you're you don't want to get let the spacecraft burn in space because the temperatures are a lot more extreme. So you do a barbecue roll. Or like you turn around a little bit here and there with the spacecraft. And uh, returning home after the lunar stays over, they reunite uh, back with the CSM. And the LEM is just left behind. The, there are two stages. The first stage is left on the moon, and the other uh, stage is uh, put in, or it's left into moon, lunar orbit. Uh, once in Earth's orbit, the service module is detached and the command module re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. It's the only part that actually returns safely to Earth. And um, parachutes are deployed to slow the module down as it splashes into the ocean where carriers and helicopters take the astronauts to land. All right, next slide. 
All right, so here's a little diagram of the spacecraft that actually is going to the moon after the docking. So here you have the service module. Uh, you can see it's protecting this heat shield here and the command module because that's what's going to be used for re-entry. Uh, when you re-enter the Earth's atmosphere, there's a lot of friction generated. So that causes a lot of heat, as you know. Friction causes uh, heat. So you don't, want that, you don't want the astronauts to burn up and die. So that's what they have a heat shield that's protected by that surface module. And here, of course, you have a limb ladder. Limb ladder. Uh, as you know, Neil Armstrong climbed down. He said, I'm at the foot of the ladder now. So that's basically where they climb down. This is the little uh, window. They climb down it, and they go back to the, um, uh, they go onto the moon. And uh, there are other parts here, but uh, some other parts that are important include uh, probably uh, this lunar module ascent stage. That's the part that takes, it detaches from this spider-like thing, and it re reunites with that one lonely astronaut in the lunar orbit, who's a command module pilot. Those two astronauts leave that spider thing behind. It's called the lunar module descent stage. They go back and meet with the uh, person in the lunar orbit. All right, next slide. All right, so Apollo missions begin. Yay, NASA uh, launched the Apollo space program, which was intended to land uh, the first humans on the moon. It was the, it was the third United States human uh, space flight program. Uh, they originally had a successful Earth mission in orbit of Earth mission in Project Mercury, which was launched in 1959 under the Eisenhower when he was president. And uh, Alan B. Shepard actually was the first American in space um, during the Mercury mission. Of course, Russians actually beat uh, the Americans to space. So this is just the first American. He's not the first, first person in space. But Ed White also was beaten by the Russians to walk in space, but he was still the first American in space, to walk in space. Um, the first Apollo mission was actually a, dis uh, a disaster because the three astronauts, including Ed White, uh, they died in a fire in a command module. Uh, they started in the command module, and they couldn't get the hatch to open up. It was, happened in 1967. So they decided, OK, we need to take precautions and be patient and do more missions and test out things. Next slide. Uh, I think you okay. I think you got it. No, no, no. You got it. Okay. Uh, so in Apollo Eight, the astronauts were uh, Jim Lovell. So of course they had a few Apollo missions pre pre preceding that to solve those problems. Uh, then they wanted to go to the moon, and they weren't ready quite ready yet to land on it. But they wanted to see if they could reach it. So these three astronauts, Jim Lovell, Frank Borman, William Anders. They um, were sent on a mission, and they actually managed to orbit the moon 10 times and return safely to Earth. And gave the people at home uh, necessary information and preparation to actually land uh, humans on the moon for future missions. Uh, you can see President Johnson there actually watching on his television, and also you can see a picture of the Earth from the astronauts. All right, here's a quick flight path of Apollo 13, I mean Apollo 8. Uh, I think this is where they I, I can't see where they take off, but here's where like they're in orbit, and then of course the uh, it fires. They they fire, and then there's a translunar injection, and then they s get slingshotted back with the moon's gravity. It's called the trans-Earth injection. Now, how long did these like missions take? Usually, it took four days to reach to the moon, and four days to come back, so eight days. All right, now here's Apollo 11. Apparently, I know how many of you guys know what Apollo 11 is. Okay, so of course it's the first successful moon landing mission. Uh, the astronauts were Neil, Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Pete Conrad. Pete Conrad was the command module pilot, so he didn't actually get to walk on the moon. These two did. Um, as you can see, the duration was eight days. Uh, first mission in which humans uh, landed on the moon, Neil Armstrong and then Aldrin. And almost 670 million people around the world were watching. And famous quotes were like from Armstrong that the eagle has landed, and I meant to put quotes on the second one, but one other famous one is that that's one small step for men and one giant leap for a man for mankind. And actually, many people also doubt doubted whether they actually made it to the moon because the as you can see in this picture, you might wonder how is that flag waving? Um, it shouldn't be waving because the moon has no air. But uh, later on, it was revealed that NASA had actually they put a little pole on the top of the flag, and the astronauts were struggling to get the flag out because it had a little error. 
So they thought that, um, so they had to like manually wiggle the flag and their human force caused that uh, waving. So they got a few rock samples and here's one of, one of rare foot, this is Buzz Aldrin right here. You can't actually see him, but this is Neil Armstrong right here. Uh, and those are the all astronauts. Okay, next slide. So obviously that was a massive success, but and they sent Pete Conrad uh, and another, um, ast the two other people walked on the moon after that in Apollo 12. Pete Conrad is the one I know. I forgot the other guys, but so after two successful missions, the hype was really down now because the competition with Russia was kind of uh, over and uh, there was less excitement. So for the Apollo 13 mission, they were going to Frau Moro Highlands in the, uh, on a different part of the moon. But it got more dramatic because actually you can see here the astronauts, there's Jim Lovell, Jack Swagger, and Fred Hayes. Uh, Ken Mattingly was actually set to uh, be the command module pilot, but he was ex it said he was exposed to the measles and he uh, was gonna get ill when the, the two astronauts came back from the moon to rendezvous with him. So he was replaced by Jack Swagger a few days before the mission, I think three or two days before. And um, basically these three astronauts, had a, they had an explosion in the, well, on their way to the moon, I think on day three. And basically the emergency ruled out any chance of landing on the moon and actually endangers their own lives because they're losing oxygen and power as well to get home. So they had to ditch the moon landing and use a free return trajectory to try and uh, and use the LEM as a lifeboat for three people. Even though it was only built for two, they had to filter out CO2 by making a CO2 filter. And uh, other also, they had to problem solve other things. The astronauts survived though, and that strengthened the uh, image of the American space mission. And actually a movie about this incident was produced in 1995, which starred Tom Hanks, and I believe a couple of other people, I think Bill Paxton, and. Uh, Gary Sines. All right, next slide. All right, and conclusion was uh, basically in the end, NASA landed 12 people on the moon, uh, 12 Americans, and actually I think Chinese, did the Chinese land, the Chinese did send people to the moon last year in 2020, December, but that's a long time after America. But in the end, they landed 12 people with only one mission being unsuccessful, which is Apollo 13. Uh, the space race between Russia and the USA was all but settled for the time being, and Russia's rocket that was intended to go to the moon actually it failed. And uh, the last mission for Apollo was the 17th, around 1973, and um, later missions actually were canceled due to budget cuts, uh, and at the time the Apollo missions costed 20.6 billion, but if you adjust it for inflation, it cost 204 billion. And, uh, Mankind might actually return to the moon by 2024. I think NASA said they intend, I think, by then. And uh, actually, see, people have wondered if you can actually go to Mars now. Uh, Tesla CEO Elon Musk is trying to develop technology that to be at Mars by 2026. Okay, uh, that's a picture of NASA. Of course, you all know what that is. All right, and here are my sources.